Hey, welcome everyone. In this episode, I'm going to unbox, install, and give you my running commentary on the Geek Smart Biometric Doorknob. I needed this for a door in my house, and I did some research. One of the things I liked about this was the price point. The other thing I liked was that it's self-contained, meaning that it doesn't need to connect to some cloud or Wi-Fi infrastructure in order to operate. It's just a self-contained unit. Now, double speed the unbox here. Manual with listing of the parts and some overview on the installation. There's also a good uh, video that the uh, seller or distributor or manufacturer makes that uh, gives you a nice, concise set of instructions. All right, so here's a hardware kit with USB cord because there is a uh, chargeable battery inside the uh, doorknob. There's the manual keys, and then this is the back part of the unit, and there's a little plug, which we'll talk about later. And then there is the front part with the biometric reader on the front. And then there's the place where you can put the key. And then this little thing is uh, a protective cover. And uh, this is the uh, bolt that will go in the center of the door. All right, so this is my kitchen pantry that I'm trying to limit access to because I've got some little ones in the house that like to let themselves in and cause some uh, havoc in there. So that's what I'm going to be replacing. So I'll start by removing the old doorknob, which is usually pretty simple. So in terms of level of difficulty for a homeowner, I would put this, oh, probably on the lighter side of intermediate or maybe just slightly above beginner. I certainly think it's something that you can do without having to hire a carpenter to come in and do for you. All right, so you remove the doorknob by taking those screws out and then also the uh, bolt has to come out. Just remove those two screws and wiggle that out. There might be a little paint holding it in there. You might have to take a knife or something to cut around the edge. Something I want to point out here is that the Geek Smart unit comes with a square plate and the one that came out of mine was kind of had rounded edges. Because of that, I'll need to, and you don't have to do this, but I wanted to do this just to make it look nice and to have it fit properly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a wood chisel and square those corners in a minute. All right, before I do that though, I'm gonna just test the new part and just make sure it fits okay. I wanna see kind of where the axle hole in the center is gonna end up. Um, there's sometimes two types of doorknobs. There's commercial and residential, and the commercial one has like a longer amount of space between the hole for the doorknob and the uh, edge of the door. So, but that looks like that pretty much lines up the way the old one does. And the other good thing I figured out is that the, the center shaft hole is actually somewhat flexible. It kind of slides back and forth. So that gives you a little bit of wiggle room there for variations. All right, here I'm gonna take the wood chisel. And if you can do this, I recommend it. But if you, uh, if you want to skip this step, I suppose you could get away with it. The downside would be that your the the bolt and the plate would kind of be sitting above the surface of the door, which could potentially get in the way of the door closing properly. All right, so see how I've got it squared out now? All right, that wasn't too hard to do. And now this just fits straight in there, and now it's flush as opposed to kind of sitting on top of the wood. It's flush in there now. All right, this is the strike plate. The one that came with the Geek Smart is almost identical to it, but I'm gonna replace it anyway, just for aesthetics, because it matches the color of the Geek Smart hardware. And then also there was this little plastic insert, and I'm not gonna use it, only because I don't wanna be chipping away at that wood and run the risk of uh, impinging on those existing screw holes and making a, a larger mess for myself, so I decided not to use that piece. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the front doorknob assembly in. Before I do that, I need to take off this little plastic protective cover. All right, so see that little connector right there? We're gonna be connecting that to the back part in a second. So feed that through there, and then you just kind of line up. There's there's two um, like shafts on either side of the assembly that need to go through the bolt. You, you'll feel it when you put it in there. Just kind of wiggle it. Don't force it, but you should kind of wiggle it into place. And then now we're gonna do the back part. Now, it comes with four of these screws, which was a little confusing to me because when I actually assembled it, I could only find 
a place for two of them. All right, now here I'm I'm indicating that you have to connect these two little electrical connectors. Now there's no there's no voltage on there. You're not going to get shocked, but they're really tiny. I actually had to go and get my glasses so I could see this up close. Don't force these. You want to make sure that that you don't damage those pins. So make sure they're lined up correctly before you push them in. This was actually probably the trickiest part of the whole installation. All right. Now, also kind of balancing everything was a little bit tricky. It might not be a bad idea if you could have an assistant hold the back side or, you know, the other side of the doorknob in place while you kind of feed this one through. Also, that wire, after I connected those two connectors, that wire's got some slack on it. It actually feeds nicely into the back half of the doorknob. and It's into the back assembly. There's enough empty space in there that you can push that wire in there. All right. Once you finally got them wiggled into place, Kind of the same thing with the screws. I find that I had to kind of wiggle the screws, wiggle the assembly a little bit to get the screws to line up. Again, you don't, don't want to force it. Start the screws by hand, not with a screwdriver, because if you start with a screwdriver, you might be muscling it a little bit too much and you run the risk of creating what's called a cross thread, which is where the screw goes in just a little bit sideways and then ends up kind of damaging it. So, so just you should be able to start the screws with your fingers. And then once you've got them in a few turns, then go ahead and switch to your screwdriver and get those tightened up. All right, once we get the screws where we want them, we need to test that the handle moves freely and doesn't move the bolt. Okay, that's what we want. Now, with the set of keys, is a little pin that you use on the back assembly there's a little hole that you're going to use to start the programming. The programming is really simple. Add administrator fingerprint. Please place your finger. Please remove your finger. Please place your finger again. Please remove your finger. All right, that goes Please on six times. Off. Addition success. Then you're done. Now you are the administrator. All right, so try it out. So you see the little blue light, plus you'll feel like a little motor inside move to engage the handle to the bolt. And then as the administrator, you can then add additional enrollees. All right, so there you have it. We've had this now for about three days at the time of recording and been very happy with it. And I'm seriously considering buying maybe two or three more for some other doors in my house where I'd like to have security. Now you do have the keys. So if for some reason there's any kind of an issue, you can always use the key and just use it manually like that. So if it loses battery or any other reason, you can always use the keys. All right, good luck.